In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at how to create fillets in the software. So you can see I've got some examples on my worksheet here, but let's apply some fillets to it. So to do that, follow my mouse pointer over to the left hand side under edit objects. And here's the create fillet tool. So let's left mouse click on that. Now, right away, you're presented with a couple of different options and we'll go through these in order in just a moment. But the first one I want to take a note of is the fillet slash tool radius. Now currently it's set to 0.25 inches and you'll notice that when I take my mouse pointer from the left here over to my worksheet because we're in the fillet tool it has changed my mouse pointer to a fillet one so you can see it's now a cross with a fillet icon above it. Now interestingly if I take it over to a corner that I want to fill it you'll notice I get this red line that indicates a preview of the fillet at its current settings which is 0.25. And you can see that the 0.25 is there on the screen in that floating field, which we can actually change, but we'll do that in just a moment. And I also want you to pay attention to the fact that next to the cross icon with our pointer is a check icon. That is telling us that it is okay for us to apply a fillet in this corner. Now, if I left mouse click, it applies the fillet. That's all well and good. And if I hover my mouse over that fillet, you'll now notice next to the cross is an X to indicate that we can get rid of this fill it. So if you don't like that one, you can left mouse click and off it goes, ready for you to create a new one. Now I did mention that floating field earlier, so let's have a look at that, shall we? So if I put my mouse pointer over here, you notice I've got 0.25. What if I wanted to change it to a larger number? Well, I can actually type it on the fly. So if I can type in 0.5 and press enter. You'll notice that the red line has now changed to reflect that this is now 0.5 and I can now apply that fillet in place. Similarly, if I want to actually change this value, I can left mouse click and keep an eye on the red line here. I can drag this out and in again to manipulate this dynamically on the fly. So if you wanted to kind of eyeball this, if your creative process is not necessarily that accurate in terms of you want to make sure that your corner just looks nice as you don't really care necessarily about a specific number, you could indeed just left mouse click and drag this out to manipulate that fill it as well. So what would happen if we were to enter a value that was far too large for a feasible fillet? Well, let's find out. So if we enter a value that's too large, like 555, and then we come over to this rectangle here, you'll notice that the software has picked up that the fillet value that we've entered is far too large and the maximum it can achieve is 3.2. And if you look above the cursor, you have a warning symbol that is in yellow with an exclamation mark to indicate the software is telling you that there is something wrong here and the wrong instance here is the value which is 555 and the software can only achieve 3.2 as the maximum radius for the fillet on this rectangle. But with that covered let's have a look at some different options for fillets. So let's go back over to the fillet tool and we'll go to dog bone fillet on the left. We'll change this back to a reasonable value so 0.25 and you can see the dog bone fillet says that these fillets are used for creating clearance in internal corners to allow slotted pieces to fit together. So if you have a project where you need to slot in some parts and get them nice and snug, this is where a dog bone fillet comes in handy. And you can notice that if I pop over to the corner here, I can again left mouse click when the check icon appears to place the fillets. And indeed, if I want to remove them, you can see the cross icon appears. I can click that to get rid of it. I can also left mouse click and drag this out to customize dynamically the size of my fillet. I can also simply enter a value. So if I pop my mouse over here, 0.25, press enter, that's the size of my fillet. Or well, I left mouse click, it now pops it on. Important note though is we don't want to use this if we're using the same size tool as our fillet radius. That's where the T-bone fillet comes in handy. So we'll change to our T-bone fillet and we'll have a look at how this works. Now, right away, I can pop them in the corner, but you'll notice I can pop them either side of the corner. So you can actually place these to make a T-shape. So for example, if I press one over here and I place another one over here, we've got our T-slot. But if you did need to place them for whatever reason on a different side, you can have this one on the left, this one on top, this one on the right, and this one on the bottom if you needed a configuration that made use of those. And again, you can left mouse click to remove these when you see that cross or X icon there. And you can left mouse click and drag to adjust this and enter the value here 
in the box to adjust that as well. Now you can see the description for it says, these fillets are used for creating clearance in internal corners when the slot is the same size as the tool. So that is when it's the same size as your actual cutting tool. And I can show you an, an internal example of this. So if I put this to 0 0.25 again, and we'll come over to this option here, we can actually click on these internal corners and you can see I've made a T-bone slot. Now I can also remove that. And again, I can change this on the fly. So if I change it to 0 0.3, enter, I now have a 0 0.3 t-bone slot there ready for use now the final use case we have for fillets is the plasma and drag knife fillet so let's have a look at what these actually look like first so i'll left mouse click to show these and you'll notice that these pop up from the corner of our shape here so i'll just pop these in place now what's actually happening here is because the drag knife or a plasma tool doesn't have a spinning spindle like a traditional end mill tool for example What's happening is the tool needs to be able to get around this corner, but because the spindle's not turning, the way it has to do this is by rounding. So the, what happens here is you can place a fillet and the drag knife or the plasma tool will follow this line all the way around, and then it will help create that sharp corner. Because it's not trying to turn here where it can't actually make the turn, where you might not get a very good result, it is going out, around, and then back in to achieve that sharp corner because remember it is not a spinning spindle, it's not a spinning tool. So in this case, you need to have that here to account for that so you can still get those lovely sharp corners. Now, one final thing to note is that when removing fillets, the software does not store what kind of geometry the fillet was created from. It always defaults to using straight lines in the order to return a fillet to a sharp corner. As such, if the fillet is across multiple spans or derived from arcs or bezier curves, then it will not go back to its original state and instead will remove the radius and extend two straight lines to the new corner. So you can see that, for example, if I go back to the T-bone fillet and I get rid of this one, you'll notice that it will now go back to a set of straight lines. But that concludes our video on the fillet tool. We hope you found this very useful. And of course, we look forward to seeing you in the next video.